efforts that are put in place by the Governor State Government in collaboration with partners that are working and supporting the state so far. This development, if sustained, Bono State will be declared free from the virus as small batches of the much-needed vaccines are being expected to kickstart more phases of the exercise. In Meduguri, Paul Nkujevana, NTA News. A sigh of relief for critical health workers and other category of first line of COVID-19 vaccine beneficiaries who waited for their turns to receive the second dose of the vaccine. Interestingly, President Muhammad Buhari was among the pace setters who took the complete dose of the COVID-19 vaccine with the second dose administered on him yesterday. Although there is currently no visible threat of another wave of the coronavirus pandemic from the downward strain of new infections, imbibing culture of safety and hygiene remains paramount. How is Boru faring in terms of vaccine response? storage, distribution, and administration, especially with the insecurity. With me to discuss issues around the COVID-19 vaccine second dose rollout is the Permanent Secretary, Bureau State Ministry of Health, Dr. Mohamed Aminu Guluzi. Sir, so it's a pleasure to have you join us on Panorama this afternoon. Thank you so much for having me. All right, sir. So, how was the success rate and the performance of the first dose of the COVID-19 vaccination here in Borno? Thank you so much. Uh, here in Borno State, uh, the first dose uh, of COVID-19 vaccination was very successful, having achieved 91% uh, coverage of the targeted population. Um, what this means is that 91% uh, of the frontline and other health workers, including also the strategic leaders, have been vaccinated. Uh, they have received their first uh, vaccines. And uh, this has uh, been attributable to the fact that uh, a lot of effort has been put in place to sensitize and uh, advocate for this vaccination. So we have achieved a huge success uh, with 91% coverage. Okay, that's great. Now tell us, what measures were put in place by relevant health uh, you know, agencies to save storage of the vaccines for the second dose administration? Well, um, the state government through the Ministry of Health and the State Primary Health Care Development Agency uh, has put in place system of cold chain equipment uh, at various levels. Uh, we have uh, one at the headquarters here in the APD unit of the State Ministry of Health. Uh, then we have three zonal cold stores, one at Mongono, Bama, and Bim. Uh, <coughs> where we call the uh, walk-in cold rooms. We also pre-positioned at um, ward levels what we call the World uh, Health Facility Solar Direct Drive. And uh, in, at each of these centers, that the vaccines are kept at the standard recommended by WHO for vaccines, not just the COVID-19 vaccines, but all our vaccines are potent and safe for utilization. So that is what we did uh, for, to keep these vaccines for the second uh, doses. Hmm. That's interesting indeed. Now, Doctor, what procedures are in place to ensure clinical and timely second dose vaccination as well as assurances of vaccine safety? Uh, well, uh, we have made an, a, a number of factors to ensure that uh, compliance is met. Um, we pre-positioned and trained uh, health workers and uh, with technical skills and technical know-how uh, about the vaccines. And f from these trained health workers, we constituted them into various teams which were sent to the local government areas. Mm. That is one. Number two, we also sent vaccines to vaccine sites or vaccination sites. 
Three, we ensured that both hard copy and electronic copies of registers were kept. So we know who are to receive the vaccines for the second time. So with those records are there. And then the third, the, during the first dose, we educated those who received the vaccine for the need to receive the second vaccine. So education was one of the methods used. And of course, also we educated them on the um, adverse events following immunization. What to report and where to report to. These are the measures we put in place to ensure that the second dose will be a huge success too. Okay, yes. that's great. Now, Permanent Secretary, Minister of Health, what measures are being taken to ensure sustenance of awareness on the new pharmaceutical uh, safety protocols for COVID-19 as we await more vaccine supply and prevent a resurgence of the unpredictable health challenge? Okay, thank you so much for this question. Um, Burma State Government, uh, through the agencies, relevant agencies, have continued uh, to step up the enlightenment campaign through uh, various uh, means, including the uh, social and uh, other media, but like uh, the NTA and other very important uh, means of dissemination of information. Uh, we also involve um, the public uh, enlightenment, uh, particularly where there is a uh, 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 huge gatherings that are going on. So what we did to ensure that this compliance is achieved is we provided uh, washing points, uh, wash hand points in various places like the hospitals, offices, and public uh, uh, places uh, with uh, soap and water and uh, other, particularly the liquid soap. And then hand sanitizers have also been distributed. We had had uh, mass distribution of masks to the public and uh, hospital workers. So we have done a lot to ensure that uh, these things are followed to the latter, particularly the social distances that have been talked about, that physical distancing, mm -hmm. uh, non-handshaking, um, wearing of masks in public places and uh, wherever you go, where there are people are, and, uh, and, and so on. Um, the uh, hygiene ethic and so many other things that will ensure that you avoid contracting this disease is being stepped up. So we are doing a lot to ensure this. There is still training of uh, uh, health workers on this. Uh, ongoing, and then the general public, uh, there are a lot of uh, uh, sensitizations and campaigns going on. Mm. Yes. This is actually a success story, yeah, Doctor. Uh, we truly appreciate you for being part of Panorama this afternoon, especially for talking to us on issues regarding the COVID-19 vaccine second dose rollout. Yeah, welcome. Thank, Thank you, you once again, and do have a nice day. Thank you so much. That was the Permanent Secretary, Borneo State Ministry of Health, Dr. Mohamed Aminu Guluzi. We are not done with issues concerning COVID-19 yet. As at the 29th of May 2021, the Nigeria Center for Disease Control, NCDC, has confirmed 31 new cases of COVID-19. According to the new figures released by the NCDC, Lagos has 15, Gombe 5, Akwa Ibom 3, while Kaduna and Kwara states have two cases each. This brings the total number of confirmed cases of COVID-19 in Nigeria to 1,600 and 66,285 discharged 156,554 and deaths stand at 2,071. Let's take a break now. Panorama returns shortly. The vaccine offers hope for a safe country free of coronavirus. I urge all state governments, traditional and religious leaders to take the lead 
in the mobilization effort within their environment and spheres of influence. I similarly urge all eligible Nigerians to present themselves and be vaccinated in accordance with the order of priority already mapped out at the various authorized designated centers only. on panorama and away from issues concerning COVID-19 now. Work on the Kaduna Canyon Standard Gauge Rail Line will commence in July this year. Minister of Transportation Rotini Amechi disclosed this when he visited Governor Abdullah Umar Gambuji at the Kano State Government House. Abdullah Mustafa has more details. The Transport Minister's visit to Kano was to assess the progress of work on the Kano Inland Dry Port project. Initiated nearly two decades ago, the project took off last year with the provision of basic infrastructure by Kano State Government. More than 2 billion naira was expended on the construction of access road, perimeter wall fencing, as well as electricity and water supply to the site. Mr. Rotimi Amichi, who expressed satisfaction with the pace of work, assured of federal government's commitment towards its timely completion and takeoff. During an interaction with Kano state government officials, Mr. Amechi told Governor Ganduje that work will commence on the Kano Kaduna standard gauge rail project in July this year. Like you know, we are also linking Kano to Maradi. So you still have a problem. This will be like a hub for the chain, uh, for the railway sector. Of course, Mr. President is making the Kano the actual commercial now center of northern part of this country and also some West African countries. Governor Ganduja expressed optimism that the ongoing capital projects being undertaken by the federal government will further boost the economic fortunes of the country. In Kano, Abdullah Mustafa, NTA News. You can get more news and updates on www.nta.ng or follow us on our Twitter handle at NTA News Now. You can also like us on Facebook at www.facebook forward slash NTA Network News. And also stay connected and subscribe to our YouTube channel at www.youtube.com forward slash NTA News Online. Also remember to watch our news live streaming at www.nta.ng forward slash live. of the students abducted by bandits in Greenfield University have regained freedom. Mohammed Umar Ajingi reports that they were released last Saturday evening by their abductors in a location near the university along Kaduna, Abuja. With hearts full of joy, the parents reunite with their children who have been in captivity since April 20th. of the students were found dead few days after their abduction, while two others were found dead in a village near the university on the 25th of April. One of the students had earlier regained freedom. As the rainy season sets in comes the issue of security, a major concern for the teeming farmers in returnee communities, farms and villages around conflict zones. 
This time around, farmers have been reassured of enhanced security as they engage in agricultural practice with the Nigerian Security and Civil Defense Corps, Civilian Joint Task Force, and hunters, among other formations, synergizing for patrols to ensure their safety. Yagum Subukar examines level of preparedness of the agro-rangers ahead of this year's farming season. Farming, which used to be the predominant occupation of the people of Borneo, was brought to a halt due to activities of Boko Haram insurgents in most parts of central, northern, and southern Borneo. This development has no doubt brought serious setbacks to the socio-economic development of the state, a situation the people described as worrisome, with the relative peace being enjoyed in most parts of the state. Farming activities are now gaining momentum with the support received from the NSCDC's Agro Rangers, complemented by other security agencies and civilian JTFs in securing lives and property of farmers while working on their farmlands. Last year, we cultivated about 10,000 hectares of land. But this year, we increased to 15,000 to 18,000 hectares of land. And across the 21 local governments where we work, and earlier, in the coming of His Excellency Professor Babagana Omar Zulum, it's only five hectares. And with the, in, uh, the security situation, we added last year to 10,000. Are you motivated? Motivated, motivated, sir! But most of the commandant of the Nigerian Security and Civil Defense Corps, Abdullah Ibrahim, says the command is fully prepared to support farmers with physical security ahead of this year's farming. We are looking at expansion in our manpower, where we see that we co-opt the civilian JTF to other aspects of logistics, such as uh, vehicles. So as soon as those things are on ground, definitely will expand to those areas. He further reveals that the command, in its quest to enhance has introduced the use of modern technology into the activities of agro-rangers by the use of drones, all in an effort to ensure food security and sufficiency this year's farming season in Borno State. The introduction of agro-rangers by the federal government in 2019 has no doubt built more confidence in farmers, thereby making them return to farmlands in areas considered safe in Borno State. In Medjugorje, Yagum Subukar, NTA News. As part of the federal government's effort towards finding a lasting solution to the former harder clashes across the country, a seven-day training on pasture and fodder development in line with the Ruga Settlement Initiative took place in Medjugorje, the Borno State Capital. The program, a pilot scheme of the Federal Ministry of Agriculture, targeted 120 pastoralist communities in two local government areas of Borno. Nurjana Hassan will now tell us more. The training, which is in line with activities of Ruga, is an initiative of President Muhammad Buhari's late administration under the Federal Minister of Agriculture with Borno, Katsuna, and Niger as pilot states. Director of Federal Minister of Agriculture in Borno, Bukar Musa, said the program is targeting training of pastoralists on how best to produce healthy animals, milk, and meat as well by using modern ways of rearing animals. We have targeted the farming families that have uh, suffered loss of uh, uh, livestock and livelihood as a result of the insurgency. Borno State Commissioner, Minister of Animals and Fisheries Development, Comrade Juliana Beatrice, commended President Muhammad Buhari for supporting Borno to have grazing areas in Mafa, Askira, and Tamshikau in northern Borno. By the time they are, they are settled in the Ruga, we will know that it's going to be a community and uh, it is going to add value to Mafa town itself. Special Advisor to the Governor on Animal Resources and Coordinator Ruga Projects, Tijani Gwani Muhammad, welcomed commended the foresight of Professor Zulum and all stakeholders involved in the initiative said the participants will be settled in rural communities after the training. According to him, they will be provided with social amenities, animals, veterinary clinics, as well as cash support. Chairman Mafa Local Government Council about Chicago assured to sustain the program. Some beneficiaries of the training lauded both the federal and state governments for providing them opportunities to boost their economic situation. Resource persons at the training dwelt on importance of pasture in livestock production and pasture management in Medjugorje. Marjana Tuhassan, NTA News.
just before we leave you, do remember to always stand with the Nigerian Television Authority against rape and rapist. Be a star in that regard. NTA, you can't be Deutsch. Thank you for tuning in. I am Lydia Odije Pochi. Ignatius and Crawford, Deadline 360. In Kano, Fatima Sanusi Karae, Deadline 360. Across the system of government to the people over the years, observers say, has been involved in several. The Bagi Adorable Marriage Festival remains a sacred obligation. For Deadline 360, Justina Etham. Efok language, otherwise known as Iko Efok, is a native language of... Thank you for joining us. I am Lydia Odije Wachi. their news and information from more media sources than ever before. Some of the news and information given are fake, unverified, doctored and manufactured to create confusion, stare disaffection and cause disunity. Before you believe or share any news, ask yourself, is this real? Is it from a credible source? Is it verified or verifiable? Fake news is dangerous. Whether you do it for fun or for political gains, real people can get hurt. Fake news. Don't create it. Don't spread it. This is a public service announcement from NTA. much as there is life, there is always a reason to celebrate one event or the other. Most of these events, such as birthdays, weddings, and even anniversaries, are planned low-key considering the current situation on ground. But regardless of the global crisis, guess what? Bakers, in their usual ways, can change the mood of any gathering with some shoes and awesome centerpieces that could give your event a lively memory. This is Bakers World on NTA. I am Funke Oyele. Many thanks for being there. This episode of Baker's World offers you a versatile and easy to make cake recipe that you will love to try. Our baker today is a retired educationist whose passion for cake making is unbeatable. You'll get to know more about her in our conversation bit. I'm pretty sure her story will inspire you. Also, we have Baker's Gist and more for you on the program. You just relax and watch as we are set to educate, inform and inspire you.
this is our Let's Bake segment and our guest baker and assistant will be showing us how to make a moist carrot cake. This recipe pairs very well with cream cheese frosting and buttercream. If you're a lover of carrots, this recipe will move you into the spirit of baking soon as most of the recipe are readily available in the kitchen. So if you're set, we're also set. Let's get started. The first thing we'll do is to wash our hands. Now we are going to on a, uh, preheat our oven to 180 degrees centigrade or 350 Fahrenheit. Now the next thing to do is to line our pan. This is nine inches pan. She's going to teach us how to thoroughly line our pans. We are starting by putting our eggs inside the mixer. We are just going to mix it for one minute. The essence is just to break the egg yolk. Now we are adding the sugar, the white and the brown sugar. for four minutes for it to be thick and fluffy. Now the next thing is to add our oil. We're going to add it slowly. We are adding two teaspoons of valina to give it a good flavor. We have our all-purpose flour that has been saved. We are adding, we are adding our nuts. Here we have our nutmeg, our um, cinnamon, nutmeg, baking powder, and bicarbonate. We're going to add all this into the flour. Then we add half teaspoon of salt, and we'll give it a stir so that all the mixture, the ingredients will be well mixed. We're going to pour the flour inside this egg and sugar mixture. I'm going to Scrape down the side of the bowl so that the flour will mix, the whole thing will mix gradually together. They will be well combined. So I'm adding the last batch of my flour. I'm careful not to over mix my mixture. The next thing I want to do now is to pour my carrots right into the mixture. So I'm going to mix it a bit. <laughs> Lastly, I'm adding my nuts. This is almond toasted and grated hot parsley. This is dates, it's optional, it's up to you. Then I mix it for the last time. We are done with the mixing. I'm trying to mix the whole butter together so that the, all the ingredients will be well combined.
I want to scale my butter to ensure that I have the same quantity of butter inside the two pans. So I'm going to give it a tap to let out the air that I've been trapped in to ensure that our cake is well leveled. Now our cake is going straight into the oven for about 30 to 40 minutes. While our butter is baking, we'll take a short break here and when we return, we'll be having a chat with our guest baker. must be your passion. If you are not passionate with this baking or this profession, because it demands a lot, it demands your time. If you are not careful, it will take away your life. You will not be able to attend to your family, but you have to set your priority right. Our guest today is a passionate baker and talented sugar craft artist. Titi Layo is an indigene of Ijero Ekiti but she was born and raised in Ileife in Ocean State, the southwestern region of Nigeria. This gentle and amiable grandmother is a graduate of the University of Ileife, now Obafemi Awolowo University, where she obtained a degree in biology education in 1985. In 1986, Titi Olobayo proceeded to the premier university of Ibadan, Oyo State, where she bagged a master's degree in early child education. Titi Laio Olobayo's journey in the cake world started after her second degree in 1988. She developed a passion for making different confectionery products she could lay her hands on this unstoppable baker found herself getting professional trainings and courses in the art of cake making and decorations. Titi Laio Olobayo is a wife and mother of three children. She is the founder and CEO of Spoons and Cakes. Join us as we welcome our guest baker for the day, Titi Laio Olobayo. You're welcome back. You're still watching Baker's World on NTA. I have with me an amiable baker, a very passionate woman. She's here with me today. You're welcome, madam. Thank you very much. It's so rare to find such an elderly woman like you still baking at this stage. So I have to ask you, how did you get started in this business and what has kept you going till this moment? A few months to my marriage, and I thought, ah, let me learn how to bake cake. Let me know how to make snacks so that I'll be a blessing to my family and make them happy. So I started. I went for a few a course in baking. And I just fell in love with baking. And I said, okay, let me just go all the way. I want to know how, even at this stage, you're still able to, you know, do all those physical um physical part of the baking, knowing that, you know, it could take you well into the night. Sometimes you might not sleep and you still have to, you know, deliver the cake you're making. It's really good that I've been helping me and keeping me fit, you know. So, and I have, I have good workers, I have good hands and I treat them well. So I don't really have a problem that most people have that say after training somebody for so many years, they leave them. I don't really have such a problem except for one or two instances and well if you say eating right i eat right but i don't think that one is really enough for one to have the strength that god has given me i give god the, all the glory after all this while that you've been in this business how have you been, been able to you know keep manage and sustain your business throughout all these years you have to have the passion you know that this business, I want to go into it. I love this baking. You give it all that you, it's possible. Another thing is that you have to go for training because there are new innovations, new skills that you have to acquire to keep you going. 
so that you'll be able to sustain your customers. So that is, is very important. Now, each time a challenge, and it's also important to have, you know, somebody that you can look up to, somebody that can be your mentor. Because if you have a mentor, and in time, time of challenges, you go to that mentor, that mentor will be able to put you right, and you'll be able to increase the knowledge of this business rapidly. COVID-19 has put a lot of restriction on, you know, how we relate with one another, how we interact, how we do business and transact business. Even you were a while, when you were baking, you had to cover your face with face mask, you know, thoroughly wash your hand just to, you know, keep safe and, you know, keep the products you're making safe. How have you been coping with all these measures and changes? Sincerely speaking, in this period of pandemic, God has really helped me. I've been getting a lot of orders from my customers. And God has been blessing me. I don't know how he does it, but that's what happens. And this period of um, pandemic is a time, you know, it, 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 it's a time that I, I go for training online to hone my skill. It's an opportunity for me to do that, and I'm really doing that. So this period of, the only challenge is this, that um, you, know, you, cost, you cannot allow customers to come into your house. So once they book for cake, we'll call for Uber, or you call for um, these um, riders to pick it up. We don't allow them to come into my house because we don't know who is who. So unlike before that, you allow your customer to come in, you'll be able to discuss at large. Do you understand? So that is a challenge, really. Thank you very much. It's really been a pleasure having this conversation with you. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me here. I appreciate the opportunity. That was our conversation with the CEO of Spoons and Cakes, Mrs. Titilayo Olobayo. Before she goes back to the kitchen to decorate our carrot cake, we have Baker's Gist on the lineup for you. Stay tuned. The health havoc occasioned by COVID-19 across the globe has taught humanity great blessings. Part of these are new ways of going about our businesses. Baker's Gist today offers some new normals that can sustain your cake business as the pandemic continues. One of the things this set of people in this business, now I think this is what we can do. Um, people in the bakery business can actually make more money this time around by visiting homes. Now, I am not talking about distribution to your wholesalers or to your retailers. I am talking about having like 200 or 500 loaves of bread and then you visit the homes of people and it's called cold calling. Another thing we might also want to look at as soccer for the bakery business during this time is to have an e-commerce platform where people can book online. I want a cake for my birthday in two days time. Is there a platform for me to book online and to pay online? Two things, e-commerce platform, e-payment system. The e-commerce platform, e-payment system is now going to help us to have the home delivery. So we need to be able to integrate our e-commerce platform, e-payment system, and the home delivery. With these three systems working hand in hand, we can make more money with less stress. cake is ready. It has been thoroughly baked. We now want to decorate it. Um, so we want to make our cream cheese frosting. So the first thing we are adding, putting it to the mixer, you can use your hand mix if you don't have a standing mixer. And we are using the bat, um, pedal attachment. So I'm pouring the cream cheese. Butter, butter. I will add the vanilla, one teaspoon. I'm going to mix it for about one minute. 
and a very low I and mean, a medium speed. a bit the last but not the least the essence sugar it's 500 grams so I will add it gradually I'm trying to decorate the cake using my panic knife and my scraper. So I'm trying to smooth this the top of the cake now. So, so now I will apply my carrot cake to decorate the base of the cake. to decorate the base of the cake. Now we are going to decorate the top of the cake with uh, still with the buttercream and we are using apple the red and the green apple in between the design I'm going to make on the cake. As I pipe one, one shell, I will put uh, apple in between. So right at the center of the cake, I'm going to squeeze icing just at the center of the cake. Uh, 
then we're going to crucify it with um, almond, grated almond, finely grated almond. Finally, I will cap it with an edible carrot. Then you have our decorated carrot cake, two-layered cake. The filling is cream cheese. This cake is very beautiful. Well done. And it has a lot of edibles on it, as you can see. Green apple, also red apple. Good job, ma. Well done. Thank you very much. Well, I do have to taste the cake to see if it's as good as it looks. From the look of it, the cake looks moist, very moist. It's soft, it's almost shaking on the roots. This cake is just very, very delicious. You know, I could taste the raisin in it, I could taste the almond seed in it, just very yummy. And when I said earlier that the cake is going to be very moist, I was right. So if you want to try something like this, all you need to do is follow all the procedure and steps that you've seen our baker displayed and you can make something this delicious too. We do hope you've enjoyed this package. So we'll come your way next week with another exciting and interesting episode. You can reach us on all our social media platforms, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube. It's Baker's World on NTA. Also our Gmail account, Baker's World on NTA. Till next week, I am Funke Uyeli. Bye for now. Every salad. This vaccine is safe and it has been certified safe and usable by NAFTA. Although social media as a channel of communication is inherently harmless, it becomes harmful and damaging when used without 